Welcome to another episode of One for the Table. I'm your gracious and lovely host, Kim Chi. And I'm John Cody. <laughs> oh my god. I feel so bad for her. I feel bad for her too. I feel like the entire internet is bullying her. I well it's funny to like watch it and laugh at it and send it with your friends. But no, then, you know, people it's not are, like, even that. and like leaving comments or like, you know, I like, feel so bad. Mean. I feel bad for her that she has family members that let her get up there and do that. But, you know, like, when we were young, we've done a lot of, like, not everybody, but, I mean, especially people, like, that go into, like, performing field, whether it's, like, piano recital or even, like, making public speech in, like, elementary school. We flopped many times growing up, you know, and this poor girl. Yeah, but, like, like, we didn't flop on national television in front of tons of people at a major sporting event wearing, like, stars and stripes forever and full, like, America glam. Like, there are there were opportunities to, like, flop, but in, in the safety of, I guess, a safe space. But, like... What level of delusion did your parents have that they let you do that, dress like that, and to be put on the internet? Being like a little too mean to her, you know, she's just like a little girl and just like a time to like experiment and try things. And right, it's okay to flop. It's just when you flop nowadays, you know, there's a chance that you could go viral. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. It's true. I actually haven't seen any of the duets. I haven't seen any of the comments. I've only let myself like run across that video. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch it, I was like, how is this? How is this not child abuse? Like putting your kid through that, knowing that it's going to be immortalized as a moment forever. Like, how did you let? her get to that point where she is just that confident and like how are you as like a stage parent okay with doing that to your kid but that's also, crazy like, when you're a parent and you love your kids so much sometimes like you protect you, them sometimes like maybe like you can't gauge like the talent of a person just because you're biased and maybe her parents think you know like she slays and she thought the world was going to love her. Well, then her parents are fucking Delulu and as as fuck. And like to the point where like that child will never succeed in anything if they think they're already like good enough to be put in that position and in that setting. That kid's never going to sing again. That kid is never going to live it down because the rest of the world sees things clearly and their parents can't take a step back and be like, um, maybe we don't have her do that. Or maybe she'll go back and practice and then come back in a few years with like a success story and she'll rise like Phoenix from the ashes. Oh, hopefully. I like a know, rebel- this, Rebecca like Black the, situation. Yes. Because she's kind of like, like fierce the amount now. Of like... You know, like, the people around the world that are laugh, laughing at her. And if I was that age, I'd be traumatized. And I would 100%. Like, oh. And you know, like, when she goes to school, all the kids at her school yes. are talking about her. And she knows that people are talking about her. Yeah. And she's going to be paranoid. Yeah. I feel so bad for this girl. I feel really bad for her either. And I'm, like, literally blaming the parents for this. Because they should have known better. And they let their kid do that. Fuck those parents. I don't for know, sure. Like a lot of things like that could have happened until like this. That could have prevented all of this. Maybe not the parents, but even the people that were like putting it together. Yeah, everyone had an opportunity to put a stop to that, and they did not. And watch like they all be like terrible people. Like the guy is like the owner of the basketball franchise or whatnot, and was like, <laughs> oh, "My daughter's gonna sing. She's a, got a beautiful voice. She gets to do whatever she wants." Like watch it be like that situation, and we're just like, "Oh, okay. Well, maybe not." But right now, feel mm-hmm. really bad for her. Those parents suck. <laughs> But when you're that age, you're reading the comments. You're like, you know what is happening. Well, hopefully she can't read. 
But hopefully for her sake, I hope she is not reading any of them. Yeah. And I hope she's like avoiding the internet. And I hope, I mean, if she loves singing, I hope she continues to hone her art and keep at it. But uh, yeah, I feel so bad for her. <laughs> and you know, man. Like, and she feels like dre- just bad about someone, you know? <laughs> right. And the thing is, it doesn't help the fact that she is, she is literally dressed mm-hmm. like the blonde girl from the Adams Family Values. Like, do you remember the one who I'm talking about? The one who was like Little Miss Perfect, Little Miss like America First. I, the uh, counterfoil to Wednesday Adams at the camp. Wrong crowd. You've never seen the Adams Family Values? Nope. You've, n- oh my God. Oh, uh, you want to play that game? Because I can list a lot of things that people have seen that you haven't seen. So you want to play that game? We can play that game. But I guarantee you, you're not going to win that game. Oh, I'm so sorry that I haven't seen the Adams Family Values. It's never crossed my mind. It is, and this is actually such the first time good... that anyone's ever brought up that thing in it my presence such ever. Such a good movie. I'm it sure, but such... there's like a lot of good movies that I haven't seen. <laughs> and I'm sure there's like a lot of good movies that you haven't seen either. Oh no! <laughs> what will I do? Adam oh Family my God. Values, a movie that I didn't even know of its there's existence. There's so. so so many animated gifs that come from that movie because it's like a gay camp classic because of the villain. There you go with the gay camp classic. Oh, heaven yeah. forbid. Debbie. So you know the gif of the woman who is like, she's wearing a headscarf and she's in a car and the house behind her just explodes and she doesn't really react to it at all. That comes from that. And also the I when uh, the thing between Morticia Adams where was like... Uh, pastel like that one so many so many iconic moments that come from that that is that are constantly being used on twitter today so you know, i haven't seen any of these gifts so i don't follow boomer accounts but i'm sure your references <laughs> can make each other very happy all right we're gonna have to watch this next time i come see you all right and i'm finally gonna go make you watch pose from episode one to the last episode. There's only three seasons. You can, I have seen the episode that he gets into the school. That was like the first season, like second or third episode. Yeah. There's been three seasons and each season all varying in different stories and characters. Okay. Well, that's that's what I've seen. You just refuse to watch the show because um, you're transphobic. But you're blaming <laughs> your lack of like pop culture or interest <laughs> in pop culture. <laughs> Uh, I'm not transphobic. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god, but actually, not that we are like a pop culture podcast, but there's actually a lot of things happening in pop culture that is like so funny to me right now. And the first one I want to talk about, and we'll get to food, like the subject of our podcast soon, but mm-hmm. I just want to talk about a few things before we get to it. Okay. First one is um, Kate Middleton. <laughs> yeah, she like disappeared and then she came back. Like, what was, people thought she was dead I think because like or... the internet. So then, internet made up the theory that um, Kate Middleton disappeared. Oh, she hasn't been seen in like a couple months because she got a BBL and she's rec- recovering from her BBL. <laughs> And then the other side of the internet is like, no, BBL can't be the reason. Um, and then someone posted like a Google image of like, how long does it take to grow out a bang? And it says two to three months. <laughs> so then the other story was um, Kate Middleton cut her like bangs into like an ugly shape. So now she's throwing her bangs up before she can be seen again. <laughs> oh my God. What did it turn out to be? Because they said they had seen her recently. There was a because, sighting. Like, the internet is like just turning like, into like a fully meme. So I think they were like, all right, you can come out for a little bit. <laughs> right. Oh, God, that's so funny. Um, God, I would hate to be like a royal family like that where you're essentially like the mascot of like England. <laughs> they were like the original reality TV show. They're like the Kardashians. They're um, pretty much. Like, yeah. UK. Except like with except like with more inbreeding. Oh my god! <laughs> well, it's true. It's yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, you can't. You can't. Him. You can't erase that just because, like, you married into you married one person of color. That does not fix your gene pool. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Those kids are all gonna have jacked up teeth. 
And the only person of color that married the press is having a field day, portraying, you yeah. know, like, villainizing oh my God. and portraying her for all these years. I so players. bad for her. Like, mm-hmm. Megan, ugh, nothing makes me more patriotic than, like, <laughs> British people having shit to say. Normally, I have all the criticisms for this country, but, like, the minute that you, like, slam fucking Meghan Markle, I, I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, bald eagle screaming. Like, I don't even know what the sound bald eagle makes. You're just, like, protective I'm, of Meghan Markle? I mean, I feel... Nor- and isn't she Canadian? Is she? I don't know. Or they're they're in Canada right now. They're in Canada. That's are the they thing. Canada? I, I thought they were in LA, but I just assume all famous people are in LA. <laughs> I thought they moved to Canada. Okay. I don't know. Anyways, I get very and, and like and when the British people on TikTok like just like shit mm-hmm. on our our stuff for no reason. It was like, bitch, you don't. You, most of the times, it just comes from the fact that they have no idea how big a country can be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, either way. Um, Whatever Kate Middleton is going through, I hope um, I hope she's well and she's healthy. Not the like, banging. I genuinely hope like it was like a bad bang that she's throwing <laughs> out because I like I love that theory so much. I don't know why. <laughs> How long does it take to grow in a bang? Perfect, perfect. She bangs. Uh. <laughs> um. And then there's something else happening in pop culture. Um, are you watching The Traders? No. The only like show that I'm watching, the shows that I'm watching are Capote versus the Swans. Mm-hmm. I'm watching, we watch the Avatar live action. Um, and we're about to start Shogun. Okay. Yeah. I actually um, dropped Capote versus Swans. Really? I liked it. It was fun. It was yeah. cute. But then, I don't know. Like, it's just kind of like, it's fascinating. The dialogues are cute. Mm-hmm. I'll pick it back up again one day. But like right now, it's not like exciting enough for me. I keep falling asleep trying to watch. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I like, I will say, like, I think I, I, I might have said this on, on a different episode of the podcast. But like those mm-hmm. two feud shows. Mm-hmm. Make cigarettes look so delicious. Mm, yeah, because just back in the day, people were just smoking. Like, people were just so. smoking, and they like they make it look so good. I've never like I quit smoking. I want to say like over nearly ten years ago, mm-hmm. and I've never really wanted a cigarette since then. Yeah. But like I watch that show, and I'm just like, ooh, ooh, they make it look really good. They make so really, they're all dying of cancer in the show, but I'm just like, oh mm-hmm. god, they look really good. They they look so tasty. Mm-hmm. Mm. Same with alcohol. I don't drink that much anymore now, but like all of them are just drinking so much. I'm just like, oh, that drink looks so good. I feel like I should watch. I should like be having an old fashioned while I watch the show. <laughs> Go vape or something. Yeah, right. I don't. I, yeah, I don't vape either. I can't. I can't be addicted to that again. Again, were you addicted before? I mean, well, I used to smoke like a pack and a half of cigarettes a day. Yeah. And then after that, I would vape. And then I I switched to vaping and then I stopped completely. And then I got back on it during the quarantine for a little bit. And then it took me like a year for me to get off of it again. But you know what? Chef doesn't smoke cigarettes. I feel like also... We all do. Oh, my God. I think a lot of them... Because you're just like stuck in a hot kitchen and then smoking mm-hmm. a cigarette gives you like an excuse to go outside, is what I assume. I mean, when I quit, I would join the smokers and be like, I'm on a cigarette break too. But then that's eventually then you when you start smoking because they're right around you smoking and it becomes like a social thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then another pop culture thing is, oh, okay, this one makes me really mad. Oh, what happened? So yesterday, I went to see Dune 2. Okay, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, don't bother, um, but that's not the point <laughs> of what I'm about to say next. Okay. Well, well, let me talk about how I felt about Dune 2, but before that, the okay. iconic Nicole Kidman commercial, the AMC one, mm-hmm. we come to this place for magic. Yeah. They changed that commercial. <laughs> Yeah, I heard they shot like three of them. No, no, no. They change it for the worse. 
it's like the same exact commercial, like mm-hmm. same setting, same outfit, same place. Yeah. But then it's just like a different dialogue, but it's like more rushed. Oh. And it's like not even iconic. Um, yeah, before, before was like it was campy. It was campy and it, she didn't, they didn't mean for it to go viral. They didn't mean for it to be like overly serious or whatnot. Like, but, but before, you know, there were levels to this. First, right. she enters the movie theater in a full suit and then she starts, we come to this place for magic. For magic. You know, dazzling images across her screen. Heartbreak feels good at a place like this. It's like, yeah. They cut all that out. And at the end, we know where she goes because here they are. They changed into something like really like anticlimactic. And I was like, which, whomever like straight person that made this call <laughs> to change it like this? Because I love going to the movies and I love reciting every single line while watching this commercial. Yeah. Like, you took away one of my joys, and I don't have that many <laughs> joys in life, and you took away one of them. Oh, uh, yeah. That sucks. I heard they filmed, like, two or three of them, and they're going to be different. Um, there wasn't, at least from what I've seen. Well, that's too bad. And then Dune 2. Did you see Dune 1? Yeah, but it was not memorable. So if you thought one wasn't memorable, oh, wait till you see two. Okay, first of all, it's almost like a three-hour movie. I think exact time is like two and a half something. Mm -hmm. But nothing happens for the first two hours. It's just just like like a lot of dialogue about like how he's a messiah and he needs to like lead the people. But they just keep saying the same thing in different ways. And Mm -hmm. each screen is shot beautifully. Yeah, but it's just like different shots of like sand dunes over and over again, and everything <laughs> is just all beige. And after a while, I'm like, I need some color. Can someone throw in a tree or like a water or something? <laughs> so I'm literally just looking at a beige screen for two hours, and like nothing happens. <laughs> and to the point where, like, you know, like when I'm watching movies, like I rarely get restless, but like this one, like I couldn't wait for it to be over. And at the end, when, like, all this, like, some action finally started happening, it was also still very anticlimactic. And they also over-explain everything, but then also they don't explain anything at the same time. Wasn't the first movie, like, super long as well? It was long, but at least there were, like, different levels to it, different settings and different Mm -hmm. characters and different things happening. Not this one. You can't, like... Here's, like, my problem with... Is I'm guessing it's going to be like a trilogy or whatnot. It was definitely a trilogy. Yeah. You cannot make like the middle of a trilogy. Like you can't make mm-hmm. a two and a half hour long movie mm-hmm. not have its own like thing. You can't have people leave something like that unsatisfied yeah. where it's like, oh, people are actually going to watch it to watch mm-hmm. all three. Like you can't do that like how long how many years did it take yeah how many years does it did it take for the first dune and the second dune to to come out between the two of them like i don't even know know. i don't even know i'm going to see the third one like i'm not i like i just don't care i have like no i'm going to to watch it from home is it on hbo or is it on theaters only It it just came out this weekend oh i'm not yeah no i'm I don't really care to watch anything unless I watch it at home. I know. We know. Yeah. Everybody I knows. Know. You don't want to go home. Pain. Except to go to the gym. Yeah. We know. Except to go to the gym and the cafe and the grocery store. The Dr. market. Necessities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that was my pop culture talk of the week. <laughs> With someone who doesn't even follow pop culture. <laughs> I have Twitter. Wow, it's and what, you get your news from Fox News? No, <laughs> I get my news, I don't know. Um, so anyways, on food, uh, I made, this week I've been cooking um, a Cantonese radish soup nonstop, nonstop. It's so good. It's like radish and white pepper, mm-hmm. and it's made with like a very, very light pork broth, mm-hmm. and 
Today, I tried to do a variation using Korean radishes, which are very, mm-hmm. very, which are much more spicy than daikon radishes. Mm-hmm. So this one came out like super peppery mm-hmm. and I used like a pork shoulder and it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Korean radish is one of my favorite ingredients because it's so versatile <laughs> and you could like cut it in a big chunk and braise it, you know, uh-huh. like, or you could like chop it into little pieces but it becomes like soft and it just like absorbs the flavor of whatever and like develop this like sweeter flavor. And I like using actually like, the, I, what do you call them? Moo radish? Um, moo? K- moo? Yeah. Moo. Yeah, that's radish? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Korean radishes, which is funny because in English they, they call them moo radish, which probably just means radish radish. Mm-hmm. Um, I like using them in conjunction with daikon radishes because daikon mm. radishes are like sweet in comparison yeah. and the mu radishes are like pungent and a little bit more like deep. So you like kind of get the best of both worlds. Mm. My favorite um, use of um, radishes, mackerel stew. It's like a mm. spicy mackerel stew with huge chunks oh. of um, radish like just braised together. That sounds so good. It is really tasty. Oh. And then another the one that's really popular in Korea is sogogi mukguk, which is like beef um, mm. and radish um, boiled together. And it's like a very like clean broth, but the beef mm-hmm. is like really tender and so is the radish. It's probably like, is it, you said it's clean, is it, and is it slightly, you said slightly spicy? It's not spicy at all. Oh, it's not spicy at all. It okay. is peppery, but like not spicy. Oh, yeah. I bet it's probably very similar to that Cantonese one, the, but, but yours uses beef, but I end up we use pork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pork is great. Reddish is also great in Senegal, like the Filipino dish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reddish is also oh, great yeah. with miso. Yeah, radish is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's just American so good. cooking doesn't really take advantage of radishes, do they? They have small. Their radishes are small. Yeah, like the French, the French breakfast radishes mm-hmm. and stuff. Their radishes are better for like crudité. Yeah, and and they're pretty and they're red and they're very they're much more intense mm-hmm. and they're not as watery. So it's hard to like put them into soups and stuff. Although I did want to this spring when all the radishes start coming out, I was like, oh, it would be fun to do this with a red radish. Mm. I also love when people like when chefs like slice the radish very thinly, like in circles, and then like and so you can use it to like see layer the... like different things. Yes, I love it's doing like a that. Like, it's almost kind of sexy, like the ingredient underneath, like peeking through, and yeah, and it's like a little, yeah, it's a little bit transparent, but then you mm-hmm. lay them out like like little gay fish scales, yeah, on the toast or something, yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. <laughs> the geometric like it just it just scratch a vi- scratches a visual itch. Mhm. Do you remember <laughs> when um like I mean r- random like simple things like go viral on TikTok and the thing that people were doing like radish dipped in butter? Yeah, wasn't that part of like a Yeah, yeah, that's right. Butter and radishes, which is like such a just a basic French thing, I think, Mm -hmm. but people were just really into it. I miss that era of TikTok. I feel like that doesn't happen really anymore. Yeah, I feel like, well, all the simple things that could have gone viral has gone viral. Tomato feta or microwaving salmon and rice with like a cube of ice. (laughs) Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think people use it differently now than they used used it before. People were just like hanging out there and now like people go to TikTok because they want something. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that changes the vibe a lot, but... I heard that um, Gen Z nowadays uses TikTok to search for things more than Google. Yes. Which is, like, crazy to me. That is um, that is true. But the generation that uses TikTok the most, mm-hmm. or the highest amount of people on it, are actually elder millennials. Millennials? Yeah, I can see that, too. Yeah. I don't I mean, know t- where Gen Z went. <laughs> I mean, TikTok does take some, like, finessing to figure it out. But once you figure it out, like, you know. You're just there. Yeah. yeah. So, I can't remember the last time I, like, saw a TikTok and I was like, huh, I learned a new thing that I want to use today. Yeah, nowadays, um, 
Well, it, it depends. I mean, I do get some, like, interesting TikToks. But then, for some reason, my algorithm yeah, it's my is algorithm. filled with people trying to sell these Tito's Vodka sweatshirt for some reason. And every <laughs> other, like, TikTok that I get, it's, like, a random person who was like, oh, guys, check out this cute sweater I'm wearing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, you have to get them before so they sell annoying. And I'm like, in what world would I be wearing a Tito's Vodka sweatshirt? Also, look like something that, like, you get somebody free. printed at home. Yeah. Or merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swag. Yeah. It's like, why would I, like, advertise Tito Vodka, but, like, pay to advertise for them? It's not right. like Tito's, like, I don't. This, like, cool brand that, you know, that's, like, so gay capped. You know? I think TikTok shop is uh, that whole thing is such a fail in the sense that it makes everything on TikTok just seem cheap in comparison. Because, like, you have two other ones. You have Reels and Shorts. You have YouTube and Instagram that are not doing this. So mm-hmm. all you're getting is, like, content from the two of them. And both of them have their issues for sure. And TikTok still has, like, a little bit of magic. But because mm-hmm. every third video is, like, some person peddling a sweater or, like, a shitty vacuum cleaner or whatnot, it just looks like Timu, but with but- videos. But to be fair, um, TikTok Shop does have its advantages. Um, have you bought anything on TikTok Shop? Well, Kim Chic Beauty. Um, oh <laughs> <laughs> Oops. No, no, no. No, I can see, like, if you don't have the intention of buying things, like, I can see it being annoying. But it's also been a great yeah. platform for us where a lot of people find out about makeup. Because makeup is one of those things yes. where... And- That's like Like, one thing when you're like, when you're actually active, I can see TikTok shop being a resource if you're like actually trying to learn about something or you want to buy something and you want to learn about it. But mm -hmm. if I'm just scrolling through trying to be entertained mm -hmm. and then I'm stuck with watching these like really poorly produced, desperate, on the verge of like desperate commercials from people who just Mm -hmm. are trying to make a buck and selling me stuff as a side hustle, I'm not going to believe a single thing they say. No, but for makeup is great because... You can do um, tutorials. Well, let me explain that. (laughs) You won't let me get a word out. (laughs) (laughs) Because back in like 2016, like all the makeup influencers and, you know, like all the stunts they pulled and all the drama pulled, people were just like... People just, like, don't trust, like, the influencers when it comes to, like, you know, like, how effective makeup is. And a lot of the people that show and use makeup are, like, real people that use makeup. So Mm -hmm. I think people are more likely to trust and buy from them. Especially Mm -hmm. if, like, you can clearly see, like, the swatch is, like, working out really well or, like, they demonstrated them themselves. And you notice that some, like, influencer just, like, saying, I love this just for a paycheck. Uh, so is that what was going on? Because I don't know any of that drama. The 2016, the makeup influencer drama? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. None. don't know any of that. No, I mean, if you look up YouTube, like, there's so many things. But all the influencers that were, like, so huge in that era just basically, like, all got canceled for one reason or another for being a terrible oh, person. I know a little bit about that. Like, is it, like, Jeffree Star? Is that a person? Is that a person? Is Jeffrey Star? Yeah. Is that a person? Yeah. Is that a is that a per, is that a thing? Um, is that is that, a, is that person a thing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> didn't they get in trouble? I don't. I don't know. I know. Yes. I know that's a makeup influencer person, but I don't know the details or who they actually are. But I've heard that name thrown around. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard. I mean, I'm not trying um, to call out any specific influencers, but... Um, oh, well, I don't know what happened to them. I just know that there's there was drama surrounding I mean, that you, particular name. Honestly, just YouTube, because then... Also, once they get canceled, there's, like, an influence of, like, cancel influencers, you know, that specialize in, like, you know, getting... Monet- like, getting hits and monetization from talking about the drama. And, like, they have those? the drama. <gasps> yes, that's also a big thing, so... As soon as someone does something, all these drama channels like jump right on and make like twenty videos and like, what did they do? Like the like, almost like uh, what's it called? Like E E Hollywood when they used to like report on celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah, kind of like that. Or yeah. People Magazine, that type of thing. Yeah. Wow, we just there is no originality anywhere. <laughs> we yeah. just keep repeating stuff. 
okay. And that's so, so funny too, because in Capote, no, um, in Feud, Betty Davis versus, oh God, what was the other one? Joan Collins? No. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm yeah, bad with Joan, names. Joan Collins but and like, Betty we, Davis? We, we, Joan Collins versus, versus Betty Davis. There was that, like that one other gossip column, columnist like in that in that show too, like mm-hmm. it just does, it just never ends. It's just like a new version of the same old shit every generation in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. But people, you know, people love to gossip. You know, even people if people do. say they, they don't, people love gossip. People go to work and they gossip about their coworkers. You know, even like the best friend group, they all gossip about each other. You know, it's just I think it's human nature. Yeah. So then for celebrity and then being able to gossip about them, you know, I guess people. There's like a common denominator and like an easy sell for tabloids. Mm. I do love a blind item. I don't love it because like either give me the full tea or don't tell me at all. I like I like just a little I just like a little taste of it. It's like it's like the molecular gastronomy of of gossip where they just give you the foam. <laughs> but also a lot of blind items aren't real. Uh, huh? I know this for a fact because um this girl that I used to work with. Uh-huh. Um, her job was to write blind, like blind items, like really for a specific magazine, and she would just fake it, and then she'd be like, "Well, what do you guys think about this?" And we're like, "Oh, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a little too far fetched." Wow, but that was like literally her job. Damn, I guess like the possibility of it being real is what mm-hmm. is the appeal of it. Yeah, it's like it's it's very um, gossip girl. Mm-hmm. You know you love me, XOXO. I've actually never seen that show. <sighs> uh. <laughs> I know enough about things. Um, I did see Bridgerton, though, and that kind of follows a similar lady whistle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Did you ever watch the sequel to that or the spin off? Yes, I did. That was so good. There's a new season coming in May, which I'm very excited about. Is it focused on the Queen again? Because. No, um, oh. this one is um, focused on Penelope, aka the girl who is Lady Whistledown. Oh. Interesting. Okay, that would be cool. I the sequel had no business being like that much better than the original. Like that was some good story. Mm-hmm. That was that was Shonda, some good. Shonda TV. Land didn't come here to play games, you know. Sean just knocking it out of the park with that one. Just mm-hmm. like I, I liked Bridgerton as like a trash TV thing that I was just addicted to, and then like I was in it for like I was feeling things for yeah. Bridgerton 2 Electric Boogaloo <laughs> not Electric Boogaloo <laughs> well there's second season and then there's Queen Charlotte which one are you talking about Queen Charlotte I'm Queen talking Charlotte. about Queen Charlotte yeah. Not, not yeah no second season is really good too though I watched both of those back to back because mm-hmm. I was late to the Bridgerton thing so yeah. it all just seems like one season to me okay yeah well, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, should we take a break? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? So, um, I just made some salmon. Um, popping in the air fryer is like one of my favorite, like, easy meals to make for myself. Mm-hmm. And, um... I used this thing called Shimmer Salt um, by some chef. Aww. Um, and it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> well, they're done with it. So. What do you mean they're done with it? It's the end of the series. No more? Yeah, no more. Limited edition? It was limited edition. So, it's, so uh-huh. they've sold out of that, and the other two, mm-hmm. I think there's like a hundred bottles left or something like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah, but I can, Shimmer Salt's not that hard to, to make. Once all the other bottles are done, I'll just release a recipe for everything. 
Okay. Yeah. How do you recommend people use the master stock one? Oh my God. Roasted vegetables, roast potatoes, roast sweet potatoes, mm-hmm. roast pumpkin. Um, I put it in sweet things a lot, mix it in sweet with things? like hot chocolate or some people have started, have some people have put it in their coffee, um, mm-hmm. with a little bit of milk sugar. Um, but yeah, master stock is amazing for making sweeter things sweeter but without adding sugar but in like a not candy type way Mm -hmm. so it's like it brings out the sweetness in like vegetables but you can also use it to marinate like pork or chicken uh, mild meat yeah okay maybe i'll try it one day or you can add it to like a vegetable curry or something and it gives it so much more like depth and layers a little vibrant like a little vibrancy just a little bit. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have listener questions. Oh, okay. Um, Hector said, what do you recommend to add to pho to make it taste good? Because I've had pho twice and both times were lackluster. What? So I- well, my answer is, I'm assuming you had pho from a place that didn't make it very good. Yeah. Because... If you get pho from a really good place, before you even add anything, it should you be take good. The broth, yeah, and it should be so fragrant and so delicious and so yummy. Yeah, like a clean beef broth with like different spices and like a little hint of like sweetness, and then you add in the fresh herbs and you know, I one hundred percent agree. My pho, you know, like I eat the veggies and then I eat my pho halfway. And then the second half way, maybe I'll add in like a little bit of sriracha and hoisin just to like switch up the flavor for the other half. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I, I also know, like it, it differently. When they go to the restaurant, they add like the raw meat on it. Mm-hmm. And then they have like little the shavings of like the the ribeye steak or whatever. And they, they have like the mm-hmm. really thin shaved meat. And then they pour the broth on top of it and it cooks that to like a pink. It's so good. They do. And that, if you're right? not familiar with ordering pho, you could ask for the beef on the side so then it comes out rare. Yeah. So then you can um dip the beef like into the broth while it's like raw uh, and it's then it's, so the broth cooks good. it. And then you there's like the other the general generic stuff that you can add onto it, like the um bean sprouts and the lime and cilantro and the mint and all the herbs and stuff like that. But but like first things first, like it should already be delicious. So if mm-hmm. your pho, uh, if your pho was was not good, and you needed to add something to it, go somewhere else. Yeah, and chances are, if there's already one Vietnamese restaurant near you, there's got to be a lot more near you. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I feel like that's how it works. Yep. Like if there's one Vietnamese restaurant in that town, there will at least be two or three more. Hopefully they'll be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question comes from Scott. Hi, I have a question for the table. I saw Kim post about hors d'oeuvres. What? (laughs) That's such a cute thing to say. Question for the table. Oh, they understand our branding. I know, I know. Oh my God, what would fans of the show be called? Do they have names yet? I personally have never done anything like that because I think <laughs> it just I've always feels very like, and and this is not me shading anyone that does it. <laughs> but I've always felt like it was such like a narcissistic thing to do because <laughs> when I first started doing drag, uh-huh. all these drag queens, all these like local queens like near me that hardly had any following or like any fans at all, uh-huh. you know, like would make their drag personas. And then, like, make their drag fan names. Oh, okay. And then every time, like, they'll, like, tweet or post on Facebook, um, they say, like, hey, all of my, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, I'm performing at this bar tonight. Come on and see me. But I'm like, can you really make a fan name for your fans if you don't have any? <laughs> Did you have any ever? You never had any then, even even after season eight. Yeah, I never did. I, I, I just said it was very, like... <laughs> I don't know. It just it felt very narcissistic, and I yeah, and it felt I felt cringy doing it, so I just never did it. I feel like it is also something that like they should decide what the name is. Yeah, and it should be like just in the comments. It should happen like organically, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. But not like, all right, fans, this is the name. <laughs> yeah. I personally, like, did not make any merch till like, I went on Drag Race and I knew, like, you know, there will be people that love and support me. Mm-hmm. But there are queens, like, that literally does drag for one month and then they're, like, making t-shirts and I'm like... Girl. And I'm sure, like, your family and friends are going to buy support all, you, but... <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, chill... Like, you know, chill out. T-shirts are, like, you also know? the worst things to have for first-time merch. Because you have to do yeah. sizes. Mm-hmm. Like, do a pin, do a sticker. Jeez. And, you know, nine out of ten times, these shirts are really cute. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's, like, a lot of, like, copy and paste in the drag community where if someone really is, like, a t-shirt design and then tag, like, the designer, that designer gets, like, flooded with DMs of, like, other, like, random queens, like, asking, like, hey, can you make me, like, a shirt design, too? Yeah. And personally, for me, like... Good for that person, though, making some money off of it. Yeah. But personally, for me, like, when I was making merch, you know, like, I thought out my, like, artists. Um, mm-hmm. um, I love like, some the of the words, t- like, 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 enjoy the work of, you know? Yeah. We still wear, I still wear some of the kimchi t shirts that I, I had way back in the day. Mm hmm. Not in public. And, but, you again, know. I'm happy for, like, artists getting their work, but I just, like, don't understand the mind of like other queens like don't you want to merge this like unique to you and your style and then sharing like your interest because mm-hmm. like all the people that design my shirts are people that i've enjoyed the work of so i wanted them and their interpretation of like me mm. as my merch yeah but a lot of them's like oh i like what she's doing all right like a, well a lot of people day, are just doing it to make some money and they're not doing yeah. it as like i mean like you know, doing it your way is all. You're all. You're also mm-hmm. doing it to make money, but like you know, having it be like artistic expression is just one thing. But whereas some other people, it's just like a cash grab, which is fine because they have no, to fund their drag. Like, but drag is expensive. Feels, you know, as someone, and I hate using the term artist, but as someone who's an artist, that whole part just feels really cringy to me. Yeah, like I saw another queen post, um, like Naomi's merch from like season eight. Like on her Twitter, uh-huh. and it's like, does anyone know, um, like, who, who designed this merch? <laughs> I still have a T-shirt from Naomi's. It's the one with her, her like, portrait with a crown on it. That was so good. Yeah, yeah I mean, Naomi makes tasteful merch too. Mm-hmm. But Very this fashion. other queen, I was just like, like, how tacky to post right. on your Twitter asking like where she got this merch so you can get one made too, like. <sighs> Yeah, shame. You know, it's for I and also it's for the same reason you know why I get annoyed when drag queens post on their social media and be like, "What kind of performance do you guys see me perform?" It's like Wait. it is your job to create a world and like present it to them. Oh, uh, well, I see you what know? you mean. <laughs> but I feel like if you're like posting things like that, like you're essentially just like a jukebox. Yeah, you know. It's like, all right. Which is why, like, you have some queens. number two, one, two, three, you know? <laughs> you have a lot of, like, you have a lot of queens fighting for the same songs. Um, mm-hmm. Because they know it makes the songs make money and not the, the performance doesn't. The, the, mm-hmm. the song makes more money than the performance itself. And, you know, like, I would, like, I'm not, like, a natural born performer or anything. But personally, for me, when I go to drag show, what I enjoy the most is... You don't have to be the best dancer. Like, I just want to see someone put a spin on something, like, in their own way. And mm-hmm. re- present, like, like show me an idea, you there know? Are, yeah, there's, like, a, there are a lot of different ways to do drag well. Some of them mm-hmm. can just, like, some of them make it a joke. Some of them make it mm-hmm. all about the look. Some of them, look, like... It could be an impersonation. But yeah, it could just, be like, a really good a point impersonation. Of view, you know? Yeah, I want to see a point of view. One thing that is like I really appreciated as a person who like came up in the nightclub and in a drag club scene was like how amazing people who like specialize in actually lip syncing is and how mm-hmm. annoying it is that that doesn't translate well on TV to the point that you have a lot of people who only experience drag on television. They don't mm-hmm. understand what it is that like a skilled lip sync and like somebody who does a ballad really well like how emotional that can be and 
yeah, and people are like, ah, oh, this is a slow song. This sucks. Like, no, there are some queens that can make you cry with a performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, drag is becoming popular, but I guess with that also, like, it comes with, like, a lot of people who with a very, like, narrow concept of, like, what drag performance is. Uh-huh. You know? And that's fine. You know, everybody has their own preference. Um, everybody has their own taste. But what I'm trying to say is this question that I didn't get to finish reading, um, <laughs> before we, like, really um, ADHD out of our <laughs> way. Right into off the into rails. Talking about something completely different that wasn't the question. <laughs> Hi, I have a question for the table. <laughs> I saw Kim post about the hors d'oeuvres the other day, and that got me wondering, what's a good amount, what's a good, let me get myself together, what's a good <laughs> amount of hors d'oeuvres to prepare for a gathering, and also, what are your favorite hors d'oeuvres that you've ever been served? Thanks. Uh, do you want to start with this Good one? questions. Um, I would do a good amount of hors d'oeuvres for a gathering. I mean, that depends on how big it's going to be. Like, how big is a gathering? I don't know. Do you mean, like, give me pre- like eight people? Like, is it a, okay, is it like so, a cocktail party? Okay, so this is my standard. When you come to my gathering, uh-huh. and when I'm making hors d'oeuvres, I like, especially if it's like an individual one, uh-huh. I want to make enough for everyone to have two piece, uh-huh. and then maybe like, Half the people can get like an extra piece if they wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's. I feel like that's it's fair. always better to have like more food, especially yes. at gatherings, because then there will be people who want to take the leftovers home, even if you don't want to eat it. Yes. And there's nothing worse than like going to a party where the host basically didn't prepare like any food or didn't even think about like how much they need, and you run out of food, and then people leave the party because they're hungry and they want to go get a burger or something. When when it comes to like hors d'oeuvres, I would say like three to four tastes per person, mm-hmm. and four to five no three to three to four tastes per person and three to four bites per person, and you also should have like snacks like little little grabby things at the table and stuff like that that aren't exactly individual bites. Mm-hmm. Um, I subscribe to like the Filipino mentality of it where like everybody just has takes home a party tray if you want to um but otherwise like if you're just thinking of like you know canapes and shit like that like you know three to three to four three to four also my personal like little hack for throwing like a gathering is prepare your herbs do whatever but always have a back of family size bag of tortilla chips Yes. And salsa and possibly guac. Yes. But don't put those yes. out yet. Yes. See how the um, appetizer and order go. And if they go too fast, then you bust out the chips and the salsa and the guac. And no one will complain about the amount of food. Also, Costco is your friend. The freezer section mm-hmm. at Costco is your friend because a lot of the stuff that they have over there are already like order of size. So... If you just want to have like other kinds or a variation of emergency backup things and you don't want to make them yourself, or you can even like start off with like, I don't know, they probably sell like mini quiches as Costco and you can use that as a base and then like make your own sauce or make your own like topping to put on top of that. And then you can use that and like make it, I'm guessing like you're not doing this as like a professional restaurant setting and you're just like having like a gathering of friends where you're just having a bunch of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, don't give yourself that much work either unless you're trying to impress stuff. Get some stuff that is pre-made. There's no shame in that. It's true. And worth comes to worth. Another easy thing is just go to Trader Joe's, buy three different cheese, like a brie, mm-hmm. semi-soft, and maybe like a hard cheese, and then just like put it on a board uh-huh. with like with like a knife and some crap. A beautiful board. Mm-hmm. A beautiful board goes a long fancy, way. Maybe throw like a little fruit and nuts in there too. Oh, but some jam. Just, like a piece of like brie with some crackers. I love fine. a fig jam. Or maybe like a special honey. That's really nice mm-hmm. too. Speaking of which, I still have our little jam advent calendar that we never got to. I know. It's right behind me. Who's that? Yeah. 
If I put it over <laughs> here. I mean, you could do a jam a day. We could do a jam a day. I mean, like, we could. Oh, I, well, I've been, doing, I've been doing a jam here and there, so I've been... You've opened yours? It. Yes, I told you this. You did? On the podcast, yes. When? Like, a few weeks ago. Uh-oh. That I've been, like, trying jams, like, here and there. Oh, I didn't know it was from the advent calendar. Where else would I get a well, where, where else would I get a bunch of like mini jars of jam from? I don't know. But it was gonna be our thing. All right. Well, I guess that was our thing for Christmas, though. So I guess that that's fine. Okay. We had this whole talk about how it's pointless to um. We had a conversation. Things. We had a conversation about how much we like marmalade. I didn't know that meant. Oh, I opened up my the, advent the, the, calendar that, was that we were gonna. That do. was a different day. Oh. Um, it's hard okay. being me. <laughs> I, I, I still love you and respect you most of the time. Uh. All right. So, okay. We actually have a question that is not like directly food related. Okay. And it's mostly for you. Oh. This person who doesn't have your name listed. I'm from a small Middle Eastern island called Bahrain. I don't know if you ever heard of it before. Love you both, Kim and John. My question is, I've been with my partner, gay relationship, for three plus years. Uh-huh. And we have an open, full, transparent relationship where we communicate and enjoy the idea of us sharing a person together. Uh-huh. So I guess my question is for John and his partner. Uh-huh. What is your nature of your relationship and what are the best advice that you can give regarding your long-term relationship? I mean, it sounds like they already kind of have their parameters of their relationship figured out. That's a question for you. I don't know why, I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm not, I'm still trying to figure out like what, what the point of the question really is. Cause they were like, oh, you know, they have an open relationship and, um, I guess, I guess they want to know like what if, I'm assuming by what is the nature of relationship you mean? So what's the arrangement between you and little John? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, I have no problem. I mean, saying you don't have to talk it about it if you don't I want do, to. I don't have a problem talking about it, but I think that's such a weird thing to ask. Maybe they just want to get to know you on a personal level. Because, <laughs> like, if they're asking, they're asking, and I've definitely, I know for a fact that I've talked about it on this podcast before, but mm-hmm. like. Just the nature of the way that they ask the question makes me like, that's kind of weird, right? I don't know. Is that weird? Because they're asking no, it in a way that doesn't really serve. No, that's because I'm not in relationship. Right. <laughs> they're, they're, but they're asking it in a way, they're asking it in a way that doesn't really like serve a purpose for them other than this fact that they're just curious. All right. Well. All right. Well, we can skip over. No, no, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, we're in an open relationship and we've been together for nine years and we're engaged, but that's it. Like, I think it works for us because we have, like, you know, openness and honesty between the two of us, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's just so boring. I, I don't know. I think it's boring because we've been together so so long and we kind of have it just figured out. You think your relationship is boring? Oh my God. I think the fact that, like, because nothing really, there's no real drama that ever comes up between the two of us anymore. I mean, that's the, honestly, that's probably which is the which best is like kind of like in. the goal, right? Just to be happy. I feel like TV and media, and you know, these like romantic, um, like novels and stories have like made people to believe like you need passion in your relationship. You know, like. You want to fight, and you want therapy to be arguments, and you want turmoil to keep your like things like interesting. But I'm like, not for everybody. I don't. Yeah, I think like when you're having like crazy ups and downs, like you're never gonna mm-hmm. have a crazy a relationship where it's just like crazy high all the time. Like I think the goal for a long lasting relationship is just to like ride a wave of like contentment mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing and that's what you're supposed to be striving yeah. for is like contentment with your partner and that does not mean like oh no you wish other things would happen no it it's totally fine just to be quietly happy with someone and i think that's how as a person that has been in very tumultuous super passionate up and down relationships before that mm-hmm. don't last um 
Yeah, finding finding the steady steady person that's just like with you is the way to go, I guess. I guess it does that answer the question? I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Get, okay. But either way, I'm very happy for you and little John. Thanks. Oh, well, actually, I feel bad for little John. He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> Your Christmas gift to little John was so unhinged. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Want to tell the listeners? Oh, what no, because I don't. I can't even tell. I, can, I can't even begin to describe what it is because, like, I for you need to read, read the title of the gift that you sent my fiance, please. Um... Let me see if I can. I don't even remember what the title was anymore. It was. It was, it was a book. A, it was a book. <laughs> let me look through like my Amazon order history. <laughs> but it was something I figured little John could use. Um, <laughs> You're such a bitch. I mean, he'll definitely be able to like use it in the future. Oh, you know. My God. Let's see. Okay, so the book is called. <laughs> Recovery from gaslighting and narcissistic abuse, <laughs> codependency, and complex PTSD. <laughs> You're such a good... Three in one. Emotional abuse, people pleasing, and trauma versus emotional regulations, mindfulness, independence, and self-caring. Oh, my gosh. I hate you. That was so good, though. <laughs> that was... Is it displayed on his shelf? <laughs> uh, I think he does have it somewhere. <laughs> Unless he chucked it in the trash, which I wouldn't be mad. No, be I funny. think he definitely kept it. He, he's he's not a type of person to throw away anything, but he, it's so funny. Uh, so um, today, right now it's sunny, but earlier today it was raining uh-huh. for some reason. And whenever it rains in LA, people act like... They don't know how to drive. At least, at least, at least, my friends, they act like the entire world is like falling apart. You know, like I have all these plans and everything, and I, I just get a bunch of like texts from people saying like, "Oh, are you sure you want to meet at the cafe in the morning?" Like, <laughs> it's pouring just rain. Just because it's raining. Yeah, but it's like it's, it was just like drizzling. It wasn't even like a downpour or anything. And it's then gonna be my seventy. Was like that, I was supposed to meet for lunch. It's like, oh, should he like postpone it to another day? It's raining. What do people do in LA when it rains? Do they go to work? They stay at home, literally. And then I went to the cafe, and it's like a cafe, you know, that's always like, it's always packed with people. Oh, is it know? the one that you text me that they have those good drinks? No, you haven't been to this one yet. Oh. Um, this one is new. But there was like no one there, which was crazy. That's and kind of nice. I was like, okay, if it's raining, let me do a little test and go to the busiest Korean market that's always like packed with um, ajumas, like yeah. on weekends. Yeah. No one there. Empty. Wow. That is that is the hack for like, like living in LA. Like, Go like, when so it rains. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, it's been we've already had a seventy degree day in Detroit and we have another one on Monday. Nice. It's gonna be nice and sunny and warm. Oh, I mean it's nice and sunny now. Oh yeah. Actually actually it is. It is over here. But yeah. Um well that is our podcast for today. Is it? I, I wish I could have talked more with you. Oh, well, we can talk a little after this if you want. No, no, I'm kidding. We're done. Bye. Oh. <laughs> if you like what you heard, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye.